that deep voice you hear is the voice of God, I mean the voice of Deacon Tom. So it's good to have the voice of the deacon here representing, um, well, those who can't be here, so at least you can hear his voice. So it's nice to have the contrast of voices here. But, um, you know, with uh, what's going on today, it's crazy. They're uh, releasing uh, a lot of people from prison so as to relieve the prison uh, uh, stress. They're giving get-out-of-jail-free cards like in Monopoly. And at the same time, um, the police are being asked to, to not enforce some of the same laws that were usually on the books. So there's no doubt that somehow this might lead to, to mayhem in our communities and a need to be able to just be more vigilant than ever. Uh, and you can see this in some of the different cities where this is happening. Hopefully people will remain calm and justice will prevail. But it reminds me of a story um, that just heard. There was a guy who broke into somebody's house and he heard this, this voice and he woke, went in there. He thought there's nobody there. He heard this voice and it says, Jesus is watching you. And he's like, oh, there's just something in my mind. He kept going to try to see what he was going to steal. And as he got to the living room, the voice was even louder. And it says, Jesus is watching you. And he was startled, and he looked around and finally realized that there was a parrot in the corner. And he goes, are you a parrot? And the parrot's like, yes. And he goes, what's your name? And, you know, and he goes, Clarence. And the burglar looks over at the parrot and says, that's the dumbest name for a bird I've ever seen. What idiot would call a bird Clarence? And the parrot looked back at him and said, the same idiot that would name his Doberman Jesus. So the thing is, is that Jesus is watching us. Like, he is protecting us. Better than a Doberman from, like, the evils that come around us. The real key thing is that we need to live in that presence that this isn't just some you know, spiritual thing that kind of calms us in times of difficulty or some neat little thing that we get to do when we make a rite of passage to like second grade and we get to like dress up in white and get to get our first communion. Or this isn't just something that we do like we spend almost $30,000 on the party for the wedding and so that everything can look beautiful and the music and make sure the cake is great and then have a divorce rate of over 50%. No, this, isn't, this, isn't, this is not the religion of therapeutic like, oh, this is so good, Jesus is watching me. No, that's not the way this works. I mean, Jesus even says in here that he tells these people who don't believe in him and follow him, he says to them, you will die in your sin. And, and today, even to make it harder, he shows how his father sent the wrath of serpents to bite these people. And unless they repented, and so we do need to live in that presence of knowing that Jesus is absolutely watching us. He's watching us in order to save us, but we need to cooperate with His divine watching over of us. And, and so the challenge, the, the daily challenge we have, especially let's say these next 30 days and who knows how long it's going to be, we're all hunkered down in our homes. And so it's right now when we can do more than anything else to let Jesus watch us, to really embrace the fact that His vision for us is better than the vision that we have for ourselves. And, and so we need to realize that being a Christian today is not a proposal to be, oh, I have this therapeutic God that every time I have something happen to me, He's just simply watching over me. No, no, no. We have a God that challenges us in our human nature to repent, to sacrifice, to actually go beyond just the normal everyday thing and recognize that if we don't change our attitudes from the inside, then where are we really going? I love um, the story of, of Shackleton. Uh, he was this... Um, he was a... Uh, an explorer at the turn of the, the 19th century, 20th century, just in, right before World War I, he had this goal of going to Antarctica and be the first man ever to do that with his team. And he sent out this advertisement, which I was just going to read to you because it's kind of, a, I think, what it is to be a Christian today. And so imagine he's trying to inspire, and, you know, in a, in a newspaper article, people who would join him on this journey 
to go to the, the most cold, freezing part with very little supplies. And, you know, you can imagine just these boats or whatever it is they were going to go do. They're going to go freeze to death, basically, to try to get to a part of the world where nobody's ever been. And so legend has it that he put this in the England Times or whatever newspaper they were reading in London at the time, like, I don't know, 1914. And it said this, men wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. You see, this is the type of advertisement that God gives us in order to be a real Christian, that we need the attitude to, that being a Christian is actually doing what Jesus said to do, which is to take up our cross and follow him every day. This particular explorer obviously had uh, just tremendous challenges. They ended up having their boat frozen out in the middle of nowhere where nobody could find them except some random whalers, but the whalers never found them. But he realized that even though they couldn't sail anymore, their boat was frozen in ice and they were basically hunkered down on these icebergs for months with sub-zero weather. He realized that the key to survival, being hunkered down, kind of sheltered in place, was having this attitude of working together, of keeping a routine, of recognizing that working together as a team, even in these sheltered in place, that they could survive. And in some sense, the coronavirus, what it's doing to us is simplifying our life. We can't watch the hockey games. You can't, there's not, well, unless you want to watch a rerun of something. But a lot of the stuff that we normally rely on to kind of keep our minds afloat are no longer there. And so it's in these moments when the attitude that we have interiorly of being able to look at our daily life and say, how can I let the vision of Jesus Christ be projected in how I live and how I talk and how I uh, deal with other people? And the challenge is there every single day to do exactly what Jesus said here. When he's challenged by these Pharisees, he says to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. You know, if the camera can pan up a little bit, you'll notice that the crucifix is covered. And it's covered because uh, in the old rite, uh, last, this past Sunday, the Sunday before Palm Sunday, they would read from the eighth chapter of John, which is what we're reading from today. And that would have been the Sunday gospel, not the Lazarus gospel. And tradition had it that Jesus, in some sense, the week before Palm Sunday, was prefiguring what was going to happen to him. In other words, he was going to go into quote-unquote hiding. And it's almost as if his divinity would be hidden behind his humanity. And so the church felt this was a good time for us to cover up all these statues, all these holy images as Jesus was covering up his divinity and hiding, so to speak. And the gospel would go on to say that they couldn't find him because Jesus was hidden. And we can think the same thing. We can think the same thing, though, that since we're hunkered down in our houses, that our churches are locked, we can't do adoration, you don't have access to the sacraments like you did before, unless you're in the danger of death, that Jesus is hidden. And that, that a hopelessness is what's going to settle in, just like those icebergs that would just crash around the Shackleton people and, and, and know that it's almost as if, well, humanly speaking, we can't survive this. This is too hard. And we look at the economy and you just watch the news and it just seems like every day all we hear about are death tolls and how many people are getting the coronavirus and, and more and more just keeps building up with anxiety around us. And that's where faith kicks in. To not reject the human difficulty that we're in, but to see it through the hidden divinity of Jesus Christ. And how I'd love to invite all of you as you maybe go out to, to purchase something from uh, the, uh, the grocery store, to drive by any of our churches in the great grouping. All of them show the hidden Jesus through the window of our churches or here through the, the CDC. So that as you drive by, maybe you can make a little visit to Jesus. 
and see that in the tabernacle there, the hidden Jesus wants to be with you and take that home with you. The fact that Jesus, although he's quote-unquote hidden, his divinity will always, always sanctify our humanity in the portion that we allow him to do that. So let our eyes today be filled with the vision of God. Let our ears be filled with the words of God. And let our hearts be inspired by the very God that came to hide among us so as to live with us forever.